The PlayStation 5 pre-order fiasco continues as Sony has finally started sending out emails for those who signed up for their website, and I've got an exclusive look at the process. And Nintendo quietly confirmed that a new Nintendo Switch is coming, and nobody realized it because they were too busy talking about the PlayStation 5 on Wednesday, so I'm here to break it down for you guys. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, but without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So obviously a very hot topic as of recently has been, well, the PlayStation 5. We've made several videos about it on the channel, and yesterday I went a little bit hard on the PlayStation 5 pre-order situation and the PlayStation 5 game situation, and I fully stand behind that. I think Sony really dropped the ball with the pre-order situation because of just the lack of communication communication. It was like, oh, they're going to go up the next day, but then they went up that day. And retailers were struggling, websites were struggling, and most importantly, consumers were struggling. And yes, I do feel that Sony lied and misled people with this PlayStation 5 game situation. We did not know that Spider-Man Miles Morales was coming to the PlayStation 4. We did not know that the next Horizon game was coming to the PlayStation 4. And then all of a sudden, Sony announces that these games are coming to the PlayStation 4 after saying that they believe in console generations. They believe in shifting to newer hardware because older hardware throttles game development. But that's not necessarily what this video is about today. Like I said, make sure you guys go check out that video if you want just a, a scathing rant that I fully stand behind about this because today some more pre-orders went up for the PlayStation 5. Now it's been very hit or miss on various websites. Places like Walmart, Best Buy, GameStop, and Target seem to randomly get more pre-orders in for the PlayStation 5 and within seconds they are sold out on their websites. But one of the things we talked about in yesterday Yesterday's video was that Sony was allowing people to sign up on the PlayStation website to secure a pre-order for the PlayStation 5 to be one of the first people to get it and then those emails never went out well today the emails started to go out and really it was a better situation I do have to give Sony a little bit of credit with this there was one main problem with this is that well a lot of people did not get an email for this people who signed up right as this pre-order announcement went up on Sony's website to be one of the first people to pre-order a PlayStation 5 Five, never received emails tons of people didn't seem to receive emails I really have seen more people saying that they didn't receive emails than saying that they did receive emails so it seems like it was completely random whether or not you ended up getting this email from Sony to secure your PlayStation 5 through Sony's website the ones that did get an email for this did have to jump through some hoops but I actually know someone personally my buddy James did get one of these emails and he basically detailed the process that he had to go through in order to get this essentially you were given a link that you were to click on. You receive this link around 1 p.m. Eastern Time or 10 p.m. Pacific Time to basically enter a random queue. Now when you enter this random queue, you are then given a wait time within this queue, which initially said it would take up to an hour to complete. The timer did seem to go faster than anticipated for James, so I'm not sure if that was basically indicative of servers working better or people potentially getting disconnected as it essentially opened up a pop-up window that would alert you and play a sound alert when your time was up and that you were next in the queue. Now thankfully James was able to secure his PlayStation 5 through this method and I actually seen some people online that pre-ordered a PlayStation 5 through the Sony website and they were actually charged shipping but since James was a PlayStation Plus member he actually received free shipping on this and that it was confirmed that he would be receiving his system on launch day. So really that's the way the first thing that this should have been. I feel like Sony should have acknowledged these pre-orders and this should have been the first wave of pre-orders. People that signed up through the website were able to get these pre-orders and then Sony could predetermine a date of when the rest of the PlayStation 5 pre-orders would go live on other places like Best Buy, Amazon, and Target because it seems like this was a much more clean system. This was actually a good way to get more of your die-hard fans, the people who really wanted a PlayStation 5, the chance to get a PlayStation 5. Now I have heard rumors that next week we're going to see some more PlayStation 5 pre-orders on places like Walmart and Target's websites, but once again, your mileage is definitely going to vary with this because these are going in and out of stock at a very rapid pace. I am thankful that my PlayStation 5 pre-order is still secured. I checked the Walmart website this morning. Everything looks in order, but it's just been a very sloppy situation. Of course, Xbox is doing their pre-orders for the Xbox Series X next week. It has a date. It has a time. Everyone knows when this is going to happen, so it's just a much cleaner system. Sony definitely did drop the ball with this, but it is nice to see that they did follow through with the Sony website signups and all that, so I do have to give them a little credit for that. 
And finally, a new Nintendo Switch is pretty much confirmed in development by Nintendo, but it was announced on Wednesday, and everyone on Wednesday was, of course, talking about the PlayStation 5. So how did everyone miss this? I'm not quite sure, but I'm glad they did, because now we're going to talk about it on this channel. So you might remember a few weeks ago on the channel, we talked about a special business meeting that was taking place on September 16th for Nintendo. Now this of course sparked many rumors about a Nintendo Direct happening before that. Then of course we got the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection, the new Hyrule Warriors game. We just got a partner direct yesterday after this business meeting. So it seemed like Nintendo knew exactly what they were doing to sort of set up this business meeting on Wednesday, September 16th. Now most of this was a lot of mumbo jumbo about the future of Nintendo, what they are doing currently currently how many people are signing up for Nintendo Switch Online service, how they're trying to integrate people into mobile games to come over to the Nintendo Switch, why they're doing so much stuff with things like movies and the theme park, basically a bunch of just standard business stuff to sort of give people an insight as to what Nintendo is doing for the future. But there was actually one very interesting segment that nobody seemed to pick up on and nobody seemed to talk about. Now this is coming to us from David Gibson who has a Twitter account who basically translates all these Japanese business meetings and allows us to know what they're actually talking about because, well, most of us don't speak Japanese. I'll have a link to David's Twitter in the description box down below. Make sure you guys go give him a follow because without him, we wouldn't really have this story. Now, David was basically translating what was being spoken about during this uh, business meeting, and he said the following stuff when it came up to sort of new stuff for the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch is still in the middle of the Switch's life cycle. Nintendo wants to prolong the life cycle, but what is different is to have a Nintendo Switch plus a light, and one and have one platform to focus all of the internal resources on and come up with unique proposals. Now that obviously sounds very interesting because you're talking about prolonging the Nintendo Switch's life cycle. And if in actuality we are only halfway through the development cycle of the Nintendo Switch, what sort of stuff would you be able to do in order to prolong the life cycle? Well, David goes on to say the following about what was said during this meeting. As far as R&D investment is concerned, Nintendo previously used to look at conventional technology that enabled a lower price and appeal to users. But now they're doing cutting edge technology. No, not cutting edge gamer. Looking how intuitive it is for users and battery life is important given the gameplay of five to six hours. Now, in order to prolong the life cycle of the Nintendo Switch, you obviously have to have great software. But with the rise of new consoles offering new technology and new sort of gameplay experiences, you have to have something to combat that with. So if Nintendo is simply saying that the Nintendo Switch is halfway through its life cycle and they want to have one platform to focus all the internal resources on and come up with unique proposals, but they're looking at cutting edge technology now, that pretty much is confirming that, yes, Nintendo is indeed working on a new Nintendo Switch. Look, I know you sort of have to connect the dots with this situation, but I think I'm pretty decent at connecting dots and sort of looking at situations and being able to sort of realize it as far as layman terms is concerned. And in layman terms, this to me screams that yes, there is fire with this smoke that has been happening. You have to remember, there have been so many reports recently about Nintendo working on a new Nintendo Switch, some even potentially saying that this could be a 4K capable system. Now, in order to make a 4K capable Nintendo Switch, you would have to do something a little bit different with this system. You would have to do something like upscaling, and that is once again some cutting edge technology. Look at what Nvidia is doing with DLSS. I know we've talked about it before on the channel, but DLSS to me is the future of video gaming. This artificial intelligence that's able to upscale these games and make them look almost completely different and even run them better than they ran at native resolution with games like Death Stranding on the PC. What's even more interesting is the fact that in the comments, David actually said that he felt that this greatly increases the chances of technology being used with the Nintendo Switch as far as DLSS is concerned, and I completely agree with him. Look, DLSS is Nvidia's baby. Who is making the internals of the Nintendo Switch? Anyone? Anyone? Come on! We all know it is an NVIDIA Tegra inside of the Nintendo Switch. So if Nintendo is wanting to utilize cutting edge technology, they're not going to be going something like the brute power route with something like the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X. They're looking at cutting edge technology as far as NVIDIA's DLSS is concerned, which would be way better for the Nintendo Switch because you could still get that same sort of battery life, but you're increasing things like resolution, you're increasing things like frame rate because of this 
artificial intelligence. So, so if you connect the dots with this situation, I think it's a pretty clear picture of what Nintendo is saying within these statements. They want to increase the Nintendo Switch's life cycle. They don't want to make a Switch successor. So what can you do in order to do that? You make an improved upon cutting edge technology Nintendo Switch system coming out in probably 2021, maybe the latter half of 2021, that utilizes things like Nvidia's DLSS technology. You're still getting the great battery life. You're still getting the portability of the Nintendo Switch system, but you're getting better results in handheld and in docked mode. Nintendo clearly is working on a new Nintendo Switch. I think this is the proof in the pudding, and it's going to be a very interesting 2021 for the Nintendo Switch.